All right, in this lesson, we are going to look at the energy considerations, as it says, for the simple harmonic uh, motion block oscillator. And hopefully, you recognize this potential energy graph from when we did Hooke's Law and uh, the spring earlier in the year, because this is an exact copy of that energy graph. So the good news here is that the energy is the energy of a block on the end of a spring. So we have a maximum potential energy initially when we pull the block to position x equals positive a, and the total energy we have is 1 half kA squared. Now that mechanical energy, the total energy, 1 half kA squared, which is also the maximum potential energy, after this point in time, is going to get shared between potential and kinetic energy. So as the potential energy decreases, as the spring is returning back to its x equals zero mark, and remember that's our marble rolling along the potential energy function, remember that? The kinetic energy is increasing. So the kinetic energy value plus the potential energy value at any point in time will equal 1 half kA squared. That remains constant. So when we add the kinetic and the potential together at any point in time, the total energy remains constant. So when we've lost all of our potential energy, we have 1 half kA squared of kinetic energy. So you really want to think of 1 half kA squared as an actual joule value. And that's locked in. So even if you're not given a value, think of it as locked in joule value, and then it's going to be shared between potential and kinetic as we go along. And then obviously for the block oscillator, we are oscillating back and forth. And I have snuck in here again a reminder that the halfway point, so again, if this is an actual joule value, 10 joules, at some point in time, you're at 5 joules, right? So, And where's the block oscillator at the 5 joule mark? Well, it has 5 joules of kinetic energy, 5 joules of potential energy. We know that the potential energy <clears throat> will be 1 half of our 10 joules, right? But I left it as an equation, 1 half kA squared. And then we just solve for x. When you solve for x, you get the 0.707 that we had talked about before. So it's just a reminder that the spring is nonlinear with energy, even though it's linear with force. So the halfway, the 5 joule kinetic energy, 5 joule potential energy, is actually at a position, an x position of 0 0.707, so almost 70%, 70% of the, a little over 70% of the amplitude. All right, so how about our actual equation? So now what we're looking at is a potential energy function, 1 half kx squared, but we know x, a cosine omega t plus phi. Well, there you have it. Just substitute right in to get equation 1. That's our potential energy function. Kinetic energy, we know, 1, one half mv squared, we could take the derivative of our cosine function, so dx dt gives us our velocity, right? Derivative of cosine is opposite sine theta d theta dt, so we get the extra omega here. And we're going to substitute that in here to get our kinetic energy equation. Well, we know omega equals the square root of k on m, so omega squared equals k on m, so m omega squared, right? m omega squared is our m omega squared in here. That equals k a squared, and look, 1 half k a squared. We just said that 1 half k a squared, that's our 10 joules, right? That's our maximum energy. So we have a kinetic energy value of 
1 half kA squared sine squared omega t. We have a potential energy value, 1 half kA squared. There it is again. Cosine squared. And when we put those two equations together, right, equation 1 and equation 2 and add those equations, we get a sine, cosine squared plus sine squared, which equals 1. And look, our x equals a cosine omega t works. We knew it worked, but it has to work for energy as well. So even when we use 1 half kx squared and we plug it into our known equations, right? we get the result that we need to get because that's how the block oscillator works. So let me clean this page up. I know most of the annotations were here, but please add in whatever you need to add in so that you can see how the, the proof that the x is a function of t works for energy also applies is in your notes.